Kelpas. He's quite a uh, angry to say the least. He was the one who single-handedly destroyed the Ice Herscher. By the way, he was able to do this before Mantis was invented. So the best weapon around wasn't a superhuman with horn kai jeans, but a gun. And even after Mantis became a thing, he didn't become obsolete as he could still hold his ground against the Mantis. But how could this be? How can a normal person be this strong? Kelpas, from his origins down to the workings of his inner mind, is very much shrouded in mystery. There's a reason we have the Kelpas 101 handbook written by your friendly neighborhood Pink Pointy ES. He certainly doesn't seem approachable or, dare I say, profound at least on the surface level. A great tactic you can use is by making yourself look slightly crazy and you can be sure to get his attention. Take it from that one guy Emil who tried to shank him with a puny knife that Kelpas still keeps around. Stockholm Syndrome is kinda cool, as Kelpas appoints Emil to be his adjutant, where he would let this homicidal person repeatedly attempt to shorten his lifespan for the funsies. We can know quite a lot about Kelpas from Sakura as she has quite a camaraderie with him. The first time she met him was in a mission at Sundown Alley. I'm sure you can remember this place as where Aponia used to run a sanatorium for various Honkai infected individuals. Sakura went through left for dead on the local inhabitants of this place, what she didn't know at the time was that Kelpas saw what was going on and is quite angry. I'm not quite sure why he's there. Like, could you imagine Kelpas with kids? Anyway, a fight quickly broke out and Sakura probably won because she brought both Kelpas and Aponia back to base right after for questioning. Kelpas was swiftly thrown into containment in the deep end for obvious reasons. He only got out of there out of Alicia's insistence because Morph has this thing called Cocoon, which is basically their hit squad. It was Alicia that got him into it, which would be where he would develop his camaraderie with Sakura. Kick names, take ass. Yeah, that's right. Another person that Kelpas has quite an attitude towards is Aponia. It's safe to say that he hates her. It most likely reached its peak when he found out that she was in part responsible for the killing of Rin, which also ended up in Sakura dying on scene. You can learn about it in details from my video on Aponia here. So, random person can solo a Hersher when that usually takes anything from a whole platoon to an entire army group. What then would the moth do? They decided to investigate the crap out of this person. And there's no one more interested in these stuffs other than Mobius. She often takes Kelpas to a friendly duel with random mantises, something that would become routine for Kelpas. For reference, his sim fought Aponia's sim for like 14,500 times. So he really enjoys these deals. To give you an idea of how dangerous he is, just the shockwave from his fighting can kill bystanders. Destruction is his specialty. Do you know why we only have a few versions of the 10th divine key when there are supposed to be like a hundred of these things? You might think it probably got lost or somehow haven't been found yet, but really it's because Kelpas dead as broke them all in the fit to find the one that Emil turned into after he became out of the 10th. Still before the study conducted, Mobius could not for her life figure out what made this man so powerful. She sent Sakura to investigate his hometown, but what turned up was a shard hellscape with some kind of sacrificial altar. But that doesn't matter because she still found ways to make Kelpas stronger by utilizing sci-fi magic to turn him into a mantis. It wasn't quite as simple as the others for some unknown reasons, but she managed to make him one, with planned obsolescence I may add, because if the whole thing gonna come crashing down before the individual components fail, you might as well not make the components last that long, you know what I mean? Here's a file that directly mentions that Mobius wants to study what makes up Kelpas's body, like literally dissect him or something because she reminds him to give her his unique heart. If you look at the appearance of Kelpas Remembrance Vessel, we could kinda infer about this. For example, this crack in this hard looking thing, which could be reminding us that he is unstable, probably in reference to his mantis surgery, and his heart, which could be what gave him all his power. Like, more than normal humans because it's what, you, you know what I mean. And this is where some might catch on to something about Kelpas. You know how in Elysian Realm, Grisio Files is the most unique because hers are not texts, but paintings. Here's the one that she painted for Kelpas. When you consider what Grisio paints is a display that is illustrative of the story of the person she shows, it becomes apparent that this shooting star could be depicting how Kelpas got to his hometown because it's where he first appeared on this planet. Notice the ambiguity. 
This is also considering that time when he said that his family was far away when asked about it. It's entirely possible he meant his family lives like a 4 hours drive away or in another continent on the other side of the world. But he could also have meant it in a galactic scale. Yes, I am suggesting that Kelpas is probably not from Earth. And I'm writing this before the next story update so I'll leave this as it is. Okay, this next part wasn't supposed to exist but it was a lazy f and the recent story update has dropped a few truth bombs so here we are. Before chapter 30, what I've said about Kelpas so far would have been a rising suspicion. But with Kelpas taking a trip down memory lane with something, it has neatly packed everything about Kelpas for us to enjoy with basically no ambiguity. So here's what we learned. That painting Grisio did for Kelpas was a literal depiction of when he crashed down from the sky, an alien essentially, where he would help the random village he crashed into fight off a Honkai invasion. The villagers worshipped him as their god which they did by tying him to a pillar and extracting his blood because they thought his blood was divine cure for Honkai. You gotta understand that people outside Morph may not know or fully understand how Honkai works. Anyway, Kelpas on his own volition endured that for until the Honkai came back for round 2 and killed everyone in the village except for Kelpas. This is the most common theme in his story. He then went on and got a job at Aponia Sanatorium where he would actually have a good time with the people there until Sakura came by and yeah. So Kelpas charging at Sakura at that time was entirely guided by his anger for the people he cared for. We could also assume that the stuffed animals he was rumored to keep around was to remind him of those kids he used to hang out with. After being taken into Moth, he would stay in it even though he despises everything it does. The reason is because at the end of the day, Kelpas is just a big tsundere that acts all tough, cold, and crazy towards anyone. Yet deep down he never really hated anyone as he hated himself more for always being the last man standing who failed to protect anyone he cared about. A person defined by grave survivor guilt that only really wants a place to call home. This is not me reading between the lines as this was literally spoon fed to us in this particular sequence. With all those loose ends tied up, I'm fully expecting Kelpas to experience some kind of significant emotional event really soon. Now for the last part of the video, did Kelpas live? No. As for how that came to be, there are a few possibilities. Some say that he got eaten by Cosma, though I do wonder. Because if my English isn't failing me, his sim's response to this being brought up was basically he learned it the hard way, that Cosma could only eat Honkai bees. So if he had died by getting eaten in any way, shape or form, I don't think he would have had the knowledge to tell us about it in the first place. An alternative that is basically the go-to for how flame chasers die is that he died on the moon fighting the final Hersher. I could not find anything specifically confirming how he died, but the fact that he did is still true. This is where I'm supposed to end by talking about what his story represents or what he stood for. But overall, his story is full of suffering with not much in the way of an idea or big morals behind. What I'm saying is, his story didn't end in a satisfying conclusion and it's just an unfortunate story. It's a story of the few who were caught up in the bigger fight. Some found meaning in what they do and may continue to do so till they stop reading. But some have lost or never had one in the first place, only letting themselves go by in the flow. And that would be how most of their story end, at least for their real selves. Because in the Elysian realm, their story is still ongoing as their sims battled for their very survival in this new Honkai story chapter. Let's see how long Kelpas will last. Thank you for watching.